the northern jewel of the Baltics, or the southern jewel of the Nordics if you ask themselves, where the medieval meets the digital and where the forests are as dense as their Wi-Fi coverage. A country where everyone lives in the same place and where you fight wars with singing. This is the Silicon Valley of Europe, where everything is done online, even becoming a citizen. So let's pack our bags and travel to Estonia. So where exactly is Estonia? It's located in Northern Europe, hugged between Latvia, Russia and the Baltic Sea. It's part of a region known as the Baltic States, along with its neighbors Latvia and Lithuania. Being the smallest of the countries, it is about the same size as New Hampshire and Vermont combined. So Estonia holds a population of about 1.3 million people, making them the 155th largest country in the world when looking at the numbers of people living inside the country. And they're taking the prestigious 129th spot when it comes to size, with a little over 45,000 square kilometers. Now, a very interesting fact here is that about a third of the population lives in this tiny area in and around Tallinn. And I mean, there's nothing spectacular about capitals holding a lot of people, but a third of everyone? That's quite unique. And the reason for this is both geographical and historical. You see, all the way back since ancient times, the coastal regions around here have had a huge role in trade and communication, something we will look into soon. And to understand the geographical reasons better, we need to look closer into the landscape of Estonia. And it might be perfect for picnics, but not for living. As forests cover over 50% of the land area, and 22% of the land is covered by bogs. So less optimal for large-scale farming or building a home, but excellent for one of the most popular activities for both locals and tourists called bog walking. The country also has over 1500 islands and more than 2000 lakes. Maybe it is a Nordic country after all. Ok, so what's with this yoke about Estonia wanting to be a Nordic country? Well, besides it's a cooler thing to be a Nordic country than to be a Baltic country, at least in the eyes of the world, there's also a lot of good arguments that Estonia loves to talk about. First, there are cultural and language ties. Estonian, which is the language spoken in the country, is closely related to Finnish, something that has helped to share cultures between the two. The historical connection we will get into soon, but in short, both Denmark and Sweden have ruled over parts of the country in the past. Then there's the fact that the Nordic countries rank high in things like happiness and quality of life, which Estonia sees as a good model for running things. And as a former part of the Soviet Union, Estonia has since its independence looked to close its ties with Western Europe and the Nordic countries by joining both NATO and the European Union. But here's the multi-million dollar question. Could you consider yourself Nordic if you don't have Nordic weather? I'm not sure. You see, Estonia has a mix of maritime and continental climate, making it quite warm, at least compared to the other Nordic countries. But make no mistake, this place gets cold. And the lowest temperature ever recorded in the country is minus 43.5 degrees Celsius, so basically a normal summer day in Finland. But let's get to the bottom of all this. What made it into the country it is today, and for that we need to travel back in time, all the way to the prehistoric period just after the last ice age. The glaciers that once stretched across the land has melted and created lakes all over the area. As these lakes were low on oxygen, dead plants didn't break up but instead created a mushy surface, becoming the foundation for the many bogs present today. The ice also left a lot of large boulders all over the country, like the Helterma stonefield. During this period of time, finno ugric tribes started to move into the area and eventually dominated the entire region. Then in the 8th to 11th century, the Viking Age happened, and most people associate Vikings with the Nordics. But Estonia had Vikings as well, and they participated in trade, raids and exploration. And here's a historical reason why so many people live in today's Tallinn. You see, this region was connected to broader northern European and Scandinavian networks, so the coasts and islands became key points for maritime trade and naval activity. As the Viking Age came to an end, Estonia was experiencing a period of stability. During this time, Christianity started to spread across Europe and missionaries from Germany and Scandinavia tried to convert the Estonian people, with little success. And it wasn't until the 13th century that the Northern Crusades chose to target the pagan Baltic and Finnic people. The goal was to convert them to Christianity and over the next few decades they fought many battles against the Estonian tribes. All until 1219 when Danish forces led by King Valdemar II took over Northern Estonia, which got the name Danish Estonia. In 1346, Danish Estonia was sold to the Teutonic Order, and this transfer of power marked the end of Danish rule in the region. This is also why Tallinn used to have a Germanic name, which was Reval. Under Teutonic rule, Estonia became part of the Livonian Confederation. 
In 1558, the Russian Tsar Ivan the Terrible started the invasion of the area and took cities like Norva and Tartu. To counter this Russian threat, Livonian nobles called for help, and Sweden and Denmark intervened, resulting in Estonia falling under Swedish rule in 1561. Over the years, this led to big changes in education, religion and land reforms in Estonia, and this period is sometimes referred to as the good old Swedish time in Estonian history. In the year 1700, the Great Northern War started, with the Swedish Empire, which Estonia was part of, on one side and pretty much everyone else on the other side. The war aimed to stop the Swedish dominance in the Baltic region and give back power to other countries. Russian forces took more and more ground from the Swedes, and in 1710 they captured Estonia. And now, bad times started for the Estonian people, with heavy taxes, forced labor and a very bad outbreak of the bubonic plague that killed major parts of the population. During the 19th century, Estonia had a national awakening. They wanted to protect their language, customs and history, so they started newspapers and schools that fostered Estonian identity. And the first Estonian song festival was held in 1869, an event that to this day celebrates Estonian culture and identity. During World War I, Estonia became the battleground between German and Russian forces, something that hurt the country a lot. But meanwhile the war happened, the Russian Revolution did as well, and in 1917 the Russian Empire collapsed, which in turn set the stage for Estonia's declare of independence, and in 1918, in the middle of the chaos of World War I and the Russian Revolution, Estonia did just that. In the following years, Estonia fought against both Russian and German forces to secure its freedom. And it did it well, as it led to the Treaty of Tartu in 1920, where Soviet Russia recognized the newly formed state of Estonia. And life was looking good for the people in Estonia, all up until World War II when the country got invaded by Germany and then again by the USSR. Then in 1987 something very unusual happened. The Singing Revolution. A non-violent mass protest that took place many times between 1987 and 1991 in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. The people looked for a friendly way to get independence from the Soviet Union, and in one of the most iconic events ever, the Baltic Way, two million people from three countries joined hands to form a 600 kilometers long human chain. This showed the Baltic nation's unity and desire to be independent from the Soviet Union. And on August 20, 1991, the revolution led to Estonia's independence. And man, has a lot happened since then. Today Estonia is like the Harry Potter of the digital world as it is one of the most advanced digital societies, and it's not for nothing that it's often referred to as the Silicon Valley of Europe, as they have had one of the highest numbers of startups per capita on the entire continent. With super successful companies being built here like Skype, Bolt and TransferWise. But it's not only the startup scene that knows its way around a computer. You see, the country as a whole is a world leader in digital governance, with 99% of its public services available online all through their developed platform called e-Estonia. Talk about putting an e in Estonia. They were the first country to start with e-voting, as they used it for parliamentary elections as early as 2005. And they also offer a unique product called e-Residency, which is a digital identity program for foreign entrepreneurs that allow them to establish and manage an EU-based company entirely online, like without ever setting foot in the country. But that tech isn't all. They also have one of the fastest internet speeds in the world and one of the highest rates when it comes to Wi-Fi coverage and internet penetration. But they shine in more than tech, as Estonia is known as one of the most green-friendly countries on our planet, with fresh air and 98% of its rivers having drinkable water. And listen to this, in Tallinn, all residents have free public transportation, and they were the first European capital to do so back in 2013. And we can't forget to talk a little about the flag of Estonia. It consists of three equal stripes with the colors blue, black and white, where the blue color represents the Estonian sky, but also the loyalty and dedication the Estonians have for their homeland. The black stripe in the middle is a tribute to the soil that supported the people for generations, but also the dark past the country has to endure. Lastly, the white at the bottom represents hope and the bright future that lies ahead. And so, the Estonian flag sums up this entire country very well as Estonia continues to reach for the sky while standing strong on its ground and looking forward to a bright and hopeful future. Now let's pack your bags again and travel to a new country by clicking off any of the videos on your screen right now.